Okay. It's one o'clock. Tell us when. Good afternoon and welcome to the WMO International Weather App Ceremony. The last event in a series marking the 70th anniversary of WMO. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, scientists and programmers, and weather photographers, because today we will also be announcing the winners of the annual WMO calendar competition. This event is being live streamed from the WMO building in Geneva on all WMO social media channels, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to our international audience. I am Sylvie Castonguet, your host for this event. With me today at WMO are WMO Deputy Secretary General Elena Menenkova, WMO Assistant Secretary General Wen Zhen Zhang, and Dimitar Ivanov, the director of the Public-Private Engagement Office, the organizers of this event. I would now like to invite, uh, and we also have with us, sorry, our audience, uh, our international weather app jury, who will join us, who have joined us on Zoom. Dimitar Ivanov will now give us the background on the weather app awards. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you very much, uh, and a good day to our international audience. It is a big day for us, the final stage of an effort that we started almost 10 months ago. The main goal of this effort was to look at how the weather information is reaching the people at the, and users today in the uh, year 2020. The smartphones and weather apps made it possible. You can carry the weather with you everywhere and receive the information you need for your outdoor activities, for your professional work, and most importantly, for your safety, because as we all know, the most important thing about weather forecasting is that it gives you a warning for the coming danger. But very often the question is which app to use which provider, because we have many apps, probably hundreds of them on the popular web uh, app stores. And this is how the idea for the WMO International Weather Apps Awards came into being. From the start, we knew that it was an experiment because it is not easy to evaluate and decide which app is better and why. But we are very encouraged of the participation and the quality of the submissions. So I would like to start with presenting some statistics about this year's competition. You may see on screen, first, we had 118 entries, a great turnover for the first competition. We have participants from all WMO regions. Most of them come from, uh, most entries came from uh, RA6 Europe, but we are very happy that we have also very good submissions from some developing countries, least developed countries, and small island developing states. Then the next uh, balance that was achieved is uh, between the public and private sector. Very happy again that participation from both sectors was almost 50-50, and we had also participation from neither private nor public, with what we call other sector, which includes academia, universities, NGOs, and finally some weather enthusiasts who make some wonderful weather apps. We had also categorization based on the type of operating system, Android or iOS, and on the main purpose of the app, general weather or specialized. So this is just one initial information on how the participation was encountered during this first competition. So, I would like to congratulate all the 118 apps providers and developers for their courage to participate. This is a great encouragement for us for the next years. And now, I think it's time to start back to you, Sylvie. So I'll give you some background on the WMO calendar competition. It was lost, launched first in 2014 and has gained in recognition and stature since then. The United Nations regularly uses the winning photographs in their features, 
And some Met offices have even launched their own competition in order to feed entries to the WMO competition. This year, the competition was open from August to October, and WMO received 1,100 photos on the theme of weather, climate, water, and the oceans from around the world. In keeping with WMO's 70th anniversary, 70 photos were shortlisted for public voting on Facebook and Instagram. Many are stunning, you will see. The final selection was very difficult to make. Between each group of awards, we will showcase the winning photographs and the honorable mentions. I would now like to invite WMO Deputy Secretary General Maninkova and WMO Assistant Secretary Zhang to say a few words of introduction. Thank you, Sylvie. Good day to everyone. Hello, participants. First of all, we are very happy to see so many participants. We thank you all for your interest, and we are very glad that this first WMO Weather Up Award attracted so many interests from the National Hydrometeorological Services, from private companies, from research institutes, and even from individuals, weather enthusiasts, to participate. Thank you. As we all know, weather forecasts have no value if it doesn't reach its intended audience, the people and the users who need this information in their decisions, sometimes in life-saving decisions. The, weather the smartphone technology today offers unprecedented opportunity to reach out the people wherever they are with the most accurate, uh, sometimes even updated to minute information. Where, uh, whatever you need your inf information, weather information for, for your sport activities, for your farming, for planning your trip. Nowadays, all you need is just to take your telephone to open your favorite weather app, and you will see information right away on the screen. So, of course, the purpose of this competition is to stimulate development of such high-quality weather apps to reach out the people. And especially, it's important for developing countries where the people have less opportunities to access information. So we're very happy to see so many applicants or nominations from developing countries. Dear colleagues, the development of Weather Up is also a very good showcase and promotion of WMO public-private engagement and partnership. For example, many excellent apps from the private companies use the data from public. This including in-situ observations, the data and the information from Earth observation satellites, and the forecasting products from our high-quality numerical prediction models. You may know that most of the data are provided by our national meteorological hydrological services based upon WMO policy for date, free and open exchange. This is what it makes it possible for private sectors, even for small companies, can focus their talent and the resource for information technology for these very informative, beautiful, and useful apps. Taking this opportunity, I also would like to express my sincere appreciation to the international jury for their excellent work. You know, it's quite a hard task for them among so many good apps to select the one which are outstanding and deserve the award we are giving today. Thank you all, and congratulations for all the winners. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite our, the chair of our international jury, Gerald Fleming, who, is, who will join us on Zoom, to introduce the members of the international jury. Gerald? 
It was a great privilege for me to chair this international jury, some of whom you can see on your screens now, comprising many distinguished people and bringing together huge amounts of expertise from around the globe. So a brief introduction, starting furthest east, we have Neil Gordon in New Zealand, spent his working life with the Met Service there and contributed to many, many WMO activities over many, many decades. From Korea, we had Jae-ho Oh, Professor of Environmental and Atmospheric Sciences at Pokyong University, and also distinguished journalist Seong Han Kim of the Korean Broadcast Service, who specializes in meteorology and disaster-related broadcasting. From Hong Kong, China, we welcomed CM Shun, who until recently was head of the Hong Kong Observatory, which is an organization that hosts the WMO World Weather Information Service website and apps. Moving across into Africa from Rwanda, we had Alphonsine Musanganira, who has many, many years experience in weather broadcasting. European jurors were Jesper Thielegaard, who graced the TV screens in Denmark for many years as a weather broadcaster, but who now focuses on the communication challenges associated with climate change. Karl Eggestad from Norway, founder of Weather One and developer of the Borealis weather system, now Karan Higo, that's used in so many weather studios of the leading weather TV broadcasters around the world. And Padraig Murphy, who leads the master's degree course in science communication at Dublin City University in Ireland. From Argentina, Carolina Chirudo is a meteorologist working with the Met Service, also lectures in university and has postgraduate qualifications in social science. She mainly works in the area of science popularization and communication. In the Caribbean, Roche Mahon is a social scientist attached to the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology in Barbados and works with Met Services throughout the region to deliver weather and climate products to the small island developing states. From NOAA's Weather Program Office, we welcome another social scientist in Gina Fiosco, who is a specialist in weather risk communication. And also from the US, Anne-Marie Gardner, a journalist who has contributed to many leading newspapers and periodicals, and who has a particular focus on stories related to weather and to agriculture. Now, the jury members study the information supplied by all the candidates. They downloaded the apps onto their own phones and tablets and rated each one of them on a scale from one to five under 16 different headings that we devised. And these individual scores were then combined using a weighting scheme to reflect the relative importance of the scoring headings to give an overall score for each app from each juror. We then did a further normalization on these scores just to make sure that every juror's uh, opinion was equally rated, if you wish. And then from that, we actually chose shortlists, shortlists for each of the categories. Then we went back to the shortlists and examined all of them again in a second round of evaluation to deliver the results that you're going to hear now in just a few moments. I can assure you that jury members recused themselves from voting for any app from their employers or their ex-employers. And I can say as chair of the jury that the evaluation and scoring was very transparent, completely independent of any influence from the WMO Secretariat, but the Secretariat did provide wonderful technical and logistical support. So that was the process and my colleagues on the jury gave very generously of their time to ensure that all of the apps were thoroughly and fairly evaluated. So I want to thank them for that. Now time though to hear about their decisions. Sylvie. So we thank the international jury for the many hours they've put into evaluating the apps. I'm sure the discussions were very animated and you certainly didn't know what uh, Gerald was setting you up for when he asked you to join the jury. But before we announce those first winning apps, I would like to show you the, the, winning the first group of winning photographs for our calendar competition. The two 2021 calendar photo competition winning photog photographs. Vladimir Tadic. Bosnia and Herzegovina for a photo taken in the Shar Mountains in North Macedonia. Will Eads from Australia for a photo taken in Port Makarai, Australia. Marco Korosek from Slovenia for a photo taken in Klaschik Faroe Islands, Denmark. Chan Kam Wing from Hong Kong, SAR China for a photo taken in Hong Kong, SAR China. Sandro Ponchet of Croatia for a photo taken in Lysinj, Croatia. And Yoshiaki 
Sato of Japan for a fo photo taken in Sendai, Japan. Aren't they beautiful? Now, back to our main event, what you've all been waiting for. We will, uh, there, there will be three groups of uh, awards. The first group recognizes innovation and promotion of the use of weather and climate information for development. Gerald, can you give us some background about this first group of awards? Sure, Sylvie, happy to do that. Now, it does sound like an easy job, just provide an app that lets people know by looking at their phones what weather to expect. But of course, as most of us know, weather is horrendously complex, continuously varying in time and in space, and the computer models that guide forecasting could provide a whole range of possible evolutions of the conditions. Some small differences are much more important than others, like the difference between one degree and zero degrees Celsius, much more important than 17 or 18 Celsius. So weather apps must distill a lot of very complex information into a, a simple, meaningful message for the user that they can easily access and understand and digest. This is the challenge. The first group of awards was for apps that particularly excelled at this task, using innovative and original approaches to display data, to engage users, and in particular to provide information to less developed countries, where oftentimes the information supply is weakest, but the needs are greatest. So there's four subcategories in this group. The first is all about the navigation of the app and the presentation of the information. The second awards originality and innovation in the app design. The third is for least developed countries and small island developing states. And the fourth is for apps that seek to engage the user through facilitating citizen science and crowdsourcing and so forth. In each of these subcategories, we have a winner and an honorable mention, except for the apps from developing countries where the jurors saw fit to award two winners and give two honorable mentions. Back to Sylvie. I invite WMO Secretary, Assistant Secretary General Wen Jin Zhang to come up and present the winners in the first group of awards. Thank you, CV. And uh, dear colleagues, it's my honor to announce the Category 1 honors. Category 1 is award for innovation and the promotion of the use of weather and climate information for development. Uh, it's a subcategory one, a world for user interface and the data representation. The honorable mention go to weather zoom from Australia. The winner is IQ weather from USA. You will see the short list from the screen, and then the announcement is for the winner. Subcategory two is the award for originality and innovation. The honorable mention goes to Climate Up from Sweden. The winner is YR from Norway. Subcategory three is the award for apps for developing countries. And uh, this is a very important uh, subcategory, you know. So we have two honorable mentions. The TT Might Office from Tenenbaugh, Tenenbaugh and Tobago. And the uh, Curacao Weather App from Curacao and uh, San Martin. We also have two winners, Air QO from Uganda and uh, Fiji Might Service from Fiji. Then you will see the video from Air Q. Thank you. of the Airco app. Uh, we're very honored and excited to be among the winners of the WMO International Weather App Awards. Thank you so much.
At Airco, we believe that we can use uh, technology to improve uh, air quality, and that's the reason we developed the Airco app. For a world for engagement of citizens. And uh, we have an honorable mention, Wendy Up from USA. The winner is uh, from Metro France, which is France Meteorological Service. We also have a video from Metro France. Please watch. Thank you. Congratulations to the winners in Group 1. Jury member Rashi Maon will now give us some background on their selection of these winners. Thank you, Sylvie, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm Rashi Mohan, and I'm the social scientist at the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology. In this role, I support the Caribbean Climate Service Program, which serves six climate-sensitive sectors in 16 Caribbean countries. So I work a lot with end user communities in agriculture and food security, water, disaster risk management, health, energy, and tourism. And from my work with these communities, it is clear to me that having accessible and even tailored early warning information through weather apps can make a big difference, not just for lives, but for livelihoods. Managing weather risks and opportunities are a daily reality for the most vulnerable in small island developing states and least developed countries. And I applaud the mobile weather app providers that continue to innovate around these interactive tools that provide end users with critical information at their fingertips 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and in most cases for free. It was great to see the range of entries and applications from around the world, but it was especially good to see entries from providers based in SIDS and LDC contexts. I know it's not easy to develop mobile platforms in resource constrained environments like ours, but you did it anyway, and we celebrate your efforts. I want to congratulate all the winners and to all weather information providers, whether you want today or not, I say, please continue to do what you do for the benefit of end users and societies around the world. Thank you. So before we move on to the second group of awards, I'd like to show you the next group of photographs from the calendar competition. So these are the winning photographs again, the last seven selected by Ziad Joseph from Trinidad and Tobago, a picture taken in Caron Caroni, Trinidad and Tobago. By Gonzalo Bertolotto in Chile, we have a picture taken in Bellinghausen Sea in, in Antarctica. By Shang Xiong Bang of the Republic of Korea, we have a picture taken in Goyang, Republic of Korea. By Guillaume Aubon of France, we have a picture taken in Burlington, Colorado, United States. And by Alberto Flores Fernandez of Chile, we have a picture taken in Santiago, Chile. And Zrinka Bal Balabanik from Croatia has taken a be this beautiful foot in Pag Islands. And Travan Revet Ir in India has this picture from Maron Delva in Madagascar. Now Gerald will introduce the second group of award winners of awards, which are specialized apps. Gerald? Uh, 
I'm sorry, we seem to be having some technical problems with the Zoom connection. Just bear with us for a minute or two, for a few seconds. Um, yes? So let's keep on going. Maybe we can... Has Gerald been able to join us, or should we move on to the... We'll invite... While we're waiting for the connection to fix, maybe we'll move ahead with the announcement of the winners. I invite... Oh, okay, sorry, I can't hear. I check that you're hearing me correctly. Yeah, I see nodding heads. Fine. Okay, we'll we have Gerald. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sylvie. It's always a few little technical glitches here and there. So as the title for this category suggests, these are about apps which have focused on particular user groups or in the case of the first subcategory, those that have shown excellence in the especially important task of distributing and disseminating weather warnings, which are essential, of course, for public safety. For this first group, jurors decided to separate the apps for warnings into both public sector and private sector, because we recognize that for national MIT services, weather warnings were an essential part of their mission. But for those from the private sector who choose to carry weather warnings, a recognition that distributing these on behalf of the public sector, if you like, or in partnership with the public sector, was an investment by them in public safety, which needed to be recognized, and we needed to give prominence to that effort. So by doing this, private sector and public sector become partners in communicating and delivering vital weather information to citizens, helping their users keep, they take timely action to keep themselves out of danger. So for the weather warnings, there's one winner, and one honorable mention for the public sector and the same then for the private sector. Then looking beyond that, agriculture, of course, one of the oldest and most important user sectors of weather information, and this is recognized in an award presented for weather and climate information for farming. The other two award categories in this for these apps are focused on outdoor and leisure activities and specialized weather information tailored for a particular sector. And in considering awards for these categories, the jurors didn't make any distinction between public and private, but they awarded excellence as they found it. So back to Sylvie. I now invite WMO Deputy Secretary General Elena Menenkova to come up and present the awards in the second group. Thank you, Sylvie. And indeed, as uh, Gerald just mentioned, uh, the first subcategory, weather warnings, is especially dear to any heart in WMO because we absolutely want every person on the planet to receive warnings and alerts. And this uh, subcategory goes to private sector and for public sector. In private sector, for their efforts to disseminate warnings to people, we have honorable mention to Weather Zone Australia, and the winner is AccuWeather United States of America. In the public sector, for national meteorological and hydrological services, who are official and authoritative source of warnings for people, the honorable mention goes to my observatory, Hong Kong, China. And the winner in this subcategory is Met Office United Kingdom. Congratulations. So now I probably can move in the second subcategory, weather climate information for farming. The, Gerald mentioned that the farmers were most long-term traditional users of weather information and reaching them through the weather app, through the smartphone is especially important, especially in developing countries. And here we have one winner, Strawberry Advisory Services, United States of America, University of Florida. And here we have videos from them. Thank you, WIWAA, for this award. This recognition means a lot to us here at the University of Florida Agroclimate Group and a lot to the growers that use the strawberry advisory system. Thank you very much. And now I go to subcategory three, weather information for outdoor activities, leisure and sports. Not very great weather today for leisure in Geneva, but 
However, we have two honorable mentions for RECA Finland and uh, Major Blue Switzerland. And the winner in this subcategory is Windy Up United States of America. Let's watch a video from them. We are very happy to be recognized by the WMO. We spent years making science understandable for millions of outdoor people. And it's a big privilege to get credit from the professional weather community. Excellent, very well, thank you. They are really great for windsurfers and for many other users. And finally, um, subcategory four, weather information for sectorial or specialized users. It's aviation, marine health, and other sectors. Honorable mention goes to Weather Online, Germany. And the winner is Info BMKG, Indonesia. Finally, the video from them. Welcome. BMKG Indonesia would like to thank the WMO for choosing us as the winner of this special category. This award is a really important event for developers all around the world and we will continue to innovate and develop our application as our model. Cepat, tepat, akurat, luas jangkauannya dan mudah dipahami. Before we move on to our final group, I would invite our jury member, Neil Gordon, to tell us about the selection process for that group. Thank you, Sylvie, and uh, hello from New Zealand, where it's 1.30 a.m., but I'm still wide awake and delighted to take part. And I must say it was a, a real honour to be on the jury for these awards. I was also a bit overwhelmed, to be honest, with the number of entries we received and they're very high quality. And my phone is now very full of apps and I've kept many of them because they are so good. And we spent a lot of time trying them out. And as Gerald mentioned earlier, had a, a very robust process for reaching our decisions. I'd like to congratulate all those who received awards and honorable mentions in this category. And I think there was a very nice mix of apps actually from the public the private and the academic sectors in this particular category. We did pay special attention, and it's already been mentioned about the importance of the warnings. Where it's good to see the use of um, clickable, or should I say tappable apps, color-coded maps to highlight warning areas. And I was particularly impressed with the public sector winner from the UK Met Office, which also included impacts and advice on actions to take. And given the importance of the official authoritative warnings from NMHSs, I would like to particularly commend AccuWeather, the winner of the Private Sector Warnings Award for providing coverage of much of the globe with clearly attributed warnings from the official sources. It's really important to have that attribution and recognition of where these warnings are coming from. Finally, my thanks to the other jury members and to my friends at WMO for their foresight in organizing these awards. Thank you and back to Sylvie. Thank you very much, Neil. And I believe I also forgot to thank Roche for the her first comments, much appreciated. So now before we move on to our last category of awards, I'd like to show the photographs from our calendar competition. These are the honorable mentions. There are 12 honorable mentions. to Simi Beristec of Croatia for his photo in Draghi of Croatia, to Emily Villamale from Spain for a photo in Barcelona, to Bruno Gonzalez from Portugal for a photo in Caravero, to Domkar Lagto for a from the Philippines for a photo in Nosango, 
to Mohamed Owal Yakudo in Nigeria, photo in Bashia Street, to Leonor Hernandez of Uruguay for photo in Punta Negra, to Alfred Z of Hong Kong SAR for photo in Vic, Iceland, to Diego Ferrer of Argentina for photo in Bas Orgados in Lori Island, Antarctica, and to Boris Jordan of Germany for photo in Belchevlu, Switzerland, to Sajal Kumar of India for photo in Nubra Valley, Ladakh, India, Mislav Bilik, Croatia, for photo in Dubrovnik, Croatia. To Teksu Kim, Republic of Korea, for photo in Gyeongju, Republic of Korea. Aren't our photographs lovely this year? I think we have really have surpassed, uh, gone to another level. Thank you for, for all the people who have participated in the, in the photo competition. The final awards recognize public weather forecasts and information. Before going to, uh, to Gerald for an explanation for this group, I would like to invite Deputy Secretary General Elena Maninkova and Assistant Secretary General Wen Jin Zhang to share their views on why weather apps are important and how the public and private sector and academia can collaborate to improve access to information to all people. Yeah, dear colleagues, it's my honor to announce the yeah, give the general. Okay. Yes. Please. Sorry, I, I will have Gerald introduce. Okay. So sorry, that's my mishap. I will have Gerald introduce the category before we go on to our assistant secretary general to win announce the winners. So Gerald, please. Thank you, Sylvie. Now, we come now to the overall awards, if you like, for public weather forecasts and information. We've divided this into two subcategories. The first is for the level of information carried by the app and its usefulness and reliability. And the second is for the design and presentation of the app and whether it provides a good user experience and the extent to which the user can customize uh, the app to their own uh, delights and so on. So in each of these subcategories, there's an award for the public sector, there's awards for the private sector, and there's awards for what we call other sectors. So just to explain, this is primarily NGOs, not-for-profit entities and individuals, as opposed to commercial private sector firms. Now, as this group represents the overall awards, if this was the Oscars, these would be the best films, if you wish. And because of the overall high standard of the leading apps, the jury decided to award two winners and one honorable mention in the public sector, two winners, one honorable mention in the private sector and in the other sectors, the, jury, the, the application numbers were quite light, so honorable mentions only for these. So I'd like to add that the short list for this was, was actually quite a long short list, about 13 apps in each of them, testimony to the high levels of excellence in meteorology, in design and innovation, which have been brought together in so many apps to bring compelling and powerful services to the palms of users. So now if I'd ask you to bring to mind the red carpet and listen to a roll of the drums, the big results are coming. Sylvie. Thank you very much, Gerald. Now, Assistant Secretary General Zhang, would you please join me on the stage to announce the winners of the first subcategory in this group? Yeah, dear colleagues, it's my honor to announce the category three and the first Subcategory one is the award for submission from other sectors. And uh, as explained by Mr. Fleming, that this category will have one honorable mention from World Weather, local forecast rain reader, and from Netherlands. This subcategory is no winner, no winner, only it's an honorable mention. For the subcategory two, a word for submission from private sector. We have one honorable mention from IOTMempo.es from Spain. We have two winners 
First one is the wider channel from US and the wider zoom from Australia. Both of them have a video and please watch. Thank you. We are thrilled to be a winner of the WMO International Weather App Awards. Thank you on behalf of all of us at IBM who work on the Weather Channel apps. All of us here at Weather Zone and DTN are thrilled and humbled to receive this award. This is fantastic recognition for our team here who... Sorry, please hold. ...have worked on the Weather Zone app for many years. Of course, this would not be possible without the high quality and highly available data we receive from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology and other WMO members. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful video. And now, finally, the subcategory three, a word for submission from public sector. We have one honorable mention, Might Arena, and uh, from Ireland. And we have two winners. The first one is uh, my observatory from Hong Kong, China. And the second one is the UK Med Office. And uh, you also have uh, two videos from both of them. Please watch. Thank you. Thank you so much to the WMO Public Private Engagement Division in organizing the WMO International Weather App Awards, which is an excellent and ideal platform to provide recognition to weather app developers from public and private sectors, as well as academia, to further stimulate the development of mobile apps for weather and climate information. On behalf of the team here at the Met Office, we're delighted to have won these two prestigious WMO International Weather App Awards. Thanks to the fantastic work of the team, who constantly look for new ways to improve how we tell our weather story via our app. Thank you. We are honoured to receive these awards. I love the enthusiasm of our national Met, Met offices there. So now I'd like to invite our Deputy Secretary, uh, I would like to invite our jury member, Gina Iosko, to tell us a few words about the last group of winners. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for having me this morning. It was truly an honor to serve in the jury as a social scientist and look at these apps from a risk visual science communication perspective. Reviewing all the applications reminded me of the similarities between predicting the weather and understanding people's risk perception and response. Both are complex systems with a science to explain patterns, patterns that unify us across the globe. Within visual and risk communication, some of these patterns include needing verbal explanations with visual icons to ensure mutual understanding I saw many such examples. Using maps to convey what would otherwise be an abstract risk, and wow, where there are some amazing map interfaces. Uh, and other apps, including protective actions with warnings, so we all know how to respond. The mobile applications submitted to this competition translated these patterns into useful and innovative features, from easy to use icon glossaries to breathtaking graphical and map interfaces that minimize clicks, of course, uh, to warnings that included protective actions. It was an extraordinary difficult choice to narrow down all the winners. Congratulations to all of you today. Thank you very much, Gina. Now I would like to invite Deputy Secretary General Manenkova to announce our final group of winners. Um, it's the last subcategory, so 
all those who were impatiently waiting. So we will hear now the winners and honorables for the subcategory two, award for design and presentation of information, user friendliness, access, customization, etc. As uh, Benjan did for subcategory one, we will start with other sector, NGOs and others. And here we have one honorable mention, which goes to your window weather. It's an application developed by the group of weather enthusiasts from Russia. Then we have awards for private sector. Honorable mention goes to Freka, Finland. And the two winners are AccuWeather, USA, and WeWow Japan. And we will see videos from both of them. Please. This recognition is so profoundly gratifying. On behalf of my team, myself, and everyone at AccuWeather, thank you for honoring our work on the new AccuWeather app. The goal of redesigning and introducing the app was a challenge unto itself. And the added obstacle of successfully launching it in 2020 makes this acknowledgement that much more meaningful. Leading this talented team was an absolute joy. Thank you, WMO, for this wonderful recognition. Hello, I'm Kei Shino Hello from Japan. I'm very honored to receive the first award. Thanks to a lot of feedback and support from the users, I was able to improve the app and win this award. So I want to say congratulations to the Vivo users. Thank you very much. Lovely, thank you very much and congrats. And finally, awards for public sector. Honorable mention goes to Bureau Weather Mobile App Australia. And the two winners are Ir Norway and Meteo Swiss Switzerland. Congratulations. Let's watch videos. On behalf of Met Norway and the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, I'm honored to be present at the WMO International Weather Apps Awards and very grateful to be recipient of the award for the EAR Weather App. This is acknowledgement of hard and dedicated work, bringing the benefits of meteorological progress and open data to the end users. Thank you very much and stay safe. Make your switches. It's only Make your switches only by receiving the WMO International Weather Apps Award. I am proud of the Make Your Switch. Make your switches only by receiving the WMO International Weather Apps Award. I am proud of the Make Your Switch team and its external partners who created and now operate the app. The app is more than a weather app because it provides the warnings for all natural hazards. This generates great benefits for the user. All right. I must admit I have the Meteo Swiss app on my phone and I absolutely love this. It's my favorite app, probably the thing I use every day. So congratulations to all of you. But before we end the ceremony, I would like uh, the jury member, Anne-Marie Gardner, to say a few words on this final selection of winners. Please, Anne-Marie. Everyone. Um it's been uh, great being a jury member and thank you for all your great submissions. Um, I also have all of these apps that won in the design sector on my phone as well. Um, as a journalist, I'm doing a lot of visual storytelling using geospatial satellites and doing weather stories. I also built a weather app that was kind of for fun, but it made me understand that simple is really hard to do. And if you have bad design, it doesn't matter how good your weather forecasting technology is, people aren't gonna 
be able to access it. So I would go as far to say as I think this is probably maybe one of the most important categories in the awards. And uh, when I went through my notes about what I was, was, you know, thinking about while I was looking at all these amazing designs, and there's so many great uh, UX that we didn't get to honor today, but, but we know who you are. Uh, and there was like the Ventuski app that was really fantastic. And the things that I loved about Yo Window was they said the magic of weather. So what's happening is things were smart and useful and where you used to have to go to a different app for air quality or thunder, they're all within the same app. So I think this move towards not just usefulness but customization and personalization, beautiful, personalized, um, and they're actually delightful now, like uh, your weather with the, you know, being able to see the sky where you are, it, it really gives you this sense of delight. So what I think is really um, fantastic um, as weather is changing more and more and becoming more urgent to get information out to people, not just hazardous conditions, but, you know, you know, daily weather, I think the merging of this is going to be really useful for society and I think will achieve you know, with, with climate change getting an increasing weather, I think um, the advances in the UX and design um, are really fantastic and are gonna help the world. And I uh, can't wait for next year to see what else is coming. So thank you everybody for, for and all the winners, congratulations. Oh, Congra thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Congratulations to all our participants to those who were recognized with honorable mentions and to all our winners. And thank you to all our photographers who participated in the calendar competition. Before we close this event, we'd like to invite our Assistant Secretary General, Wen Zhen to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Sylvie. Dear colleagues, it is my great honor to deliver a short closing remark on behalf of the WMO Executive Management and Professor Talas, Secretary General of WMO, Madame Elena Manakova, the Deputy Secretary General, and to thank you all again for this wonderful event. As you know, it was not uh, an easy year for the whole world and it is also a difficult year for WMO. But I'm happy that toward the end of the year, we could organize this event to demonstrate that our community provides outstanding service to society, even in the most difficult time. We all contribute to our common goal and vision for a more resilient and a safer planet. I believe that WMO International Weather Up Award succeeded in building momentum, stimulating creative innovation and the service spirit. My appreciation also would like to go to our secretary, the team, for their excellent work and the leadership of Mr. Dimita Innovative the Director of WMO Public and Private Engagement Office. Finally, I would like to give my strongest encouragement to you all for our methodological community, including both public and private sector, for the continued improvement and the development of the global, regional, national, and even sub-regional apps, which I hope these apps should cover all the WMO core business areas. In reality, you see that the existing apps are beyond the weather, it's more inclusive. But I do believe that uh, the future, all the apps can cover weather, climate, water, and the environmental issues. And I also, I hope that the competition should become a WMO traditional annual event and make this event as a place 
where public, private, academia, and uh, all the civil sectors can compete in a friendly and productive way. That results in mutual improvement and excellency. I use this opportunity to wish you all a happy holiday season and a happier, happier New Year 2021. And I would like to invite all our working staff here to join me to say Happy New Year 2021 to you all, please. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yes, we keep a uh, good uh, social distance. Yeah, it's uh, Dimitar and uh, Yiwang. Yeah, Siri, that's our team, but we do have uh, people behind. It's, uh, they are the real hero behind the scene. Thank you all, and uh, I give this uh, final word to our chair lady. It's okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm, we were glad to have you today. Uh, we really are hoping that we will be able to present more events like this to w, uh, from WMO and that you will be able to join us. Thank you to our international jury again. They were wonderful. They were, they've made an excellent selection. Thank you to our winners and thank you to all our staff. Happy New Year. Happy season, season's greetings to all of you. All the best. Thank you.